Hi, my name is Vicky Lee Bolter. Um, this tutorial is going to be about frequency separation. I'm asked about frequency separation all the time um, because people think it's really complicated. Actually, it's really easy. So we're just going to open an image. This is my dear friend Monica. Uh, so let's just find one we like. Yep, that one will do. Okay. Oh, it's opened in camera raw because um, I photographed it in raw. So let's just open it in Photoshop. There you go. Let's just have a quick look at Monica. As you can see, she's stunningly beautiful. Um, but for what I want to do, I, I need a blemish free skin and I want to get rid of a few blemishes, a few lines just even things out a little bit so that we've got a good base um, for the avant-garde image that we're going to do in the next tutorial. Okay, so we're just preparing the image ready for the artwork later. So the first thing that's really important um, that you have to do is go to image mode and select 16-bit channel. Don't ask me why, but you do and then make two layers of your background image and rename them. The bottom one you're going to call skin tones and the top one you want to call skin textures um, because basically we're going to be working on two layers and that's what frequency separation is. You're going to be changing the color and the textures. Okay, turn off skin textures, select skin tones, go to filter blur, filter, blur, gaussian blur and just play around with the slider until the image is out of focus and the skin looks completely smooth. You don't have to be able to see the image properly, you can just about make it out. There you go, like that, that's fine, press OK. And then put skin textures back on, go to image, apply image. On the layer, select skin tones. On the blending, make sure it's on subtract. Make sure the scale is 2 and it's offset at 1 to 8 and press OK. Then change to linear light. Now that is the formula. If you just do that simple technique, frequency se separation is an absolute doddle. OK, so remember that. Now we're going on to skin tones. We're going to select areas of skin that need blending. So you're just going to feather and gaussian blur different areas of skin. Now remember, because you're on the skin tones layer, you're not touching the textures. You're just changing the color tones slightly. So play with the slider till it feels right um, and do that all over the face. So you're looking for different areas of skin where the, where the colors are a little bit blemished, a little bit uneven. And you're just using gaussian blur to even them out slightly. Do remember though to keep highlights and to keep shadows. You need definition in your face, otherwise everything starts looking very flat. So try and do this quite subtly. There we go, just going around the face doing this. Usually I wouldn't be as quick as this, I'd probably take a bit longer. Um, because I'm a bit of a perfectionist, but you know, for the sake of not boring you to tears during my tutorial, I thought I'd go a bit quicker. And if you're doing smaller areas, like on the nose here, you're going to have to feather um, a, a lower number because otherwise you're just going to it's just going to disappear. So there you go. That's twenty. That one's fine. Super. Okay, we're going up to skin textures now. Now remember. You're not going to be touching those tones and colours, you're just going to be changing the textures now. So select your clone tool and you're going to be collecting, um, you're going to be cloning good parts of the skin over the bad parts of the skin. So if you've got a blemish, you're just going to go over the bad bit with a good, a good bit. It's, it's that easy. We all, we all know how to use a clone tool. But by doing it this way, you're not touching the colours underneath and therefore you're maintaining a very realistic look to the to the person that you're working on. Now this I, I do take a while doing because I actually quite enjoy doing it but also I'm such a perfectionist I, I like the skin textures to, to look really good um, when I'm preparing a face um, for one of my avant-garde portraits. 
So this bit I would normally take a lot longer um, doing than I am today. This skin's looking pretty good on this cheek here. So what you can do is up the size of your clone tool and take those textures from that side because they're, they're looking really good onto the other side. Um, and it doesn't look strange because you, the colours and the shadows are all exactly the same underneath. So by, by working on frequency separation, you can maintain that whilst you're working on the textures. There we go. I'm getting there. Sorry, it's taking a while. Um, but we want this to look just right. Oops, and again. That's better. There we are. I mean, I'm taking out lots of lines and lots of blemishes here. I am being a bit critical. If you want a really natural um, portrait, you only need to take out a few critical blemishes or you know, anything that really isn't good. Um, I'm being, um, I'm taking out quite a lot here just because for the work I do, I do like everything to be flawless. Um, so group those layers together and if you turn it on and off look, you can see what an impact frequency separation has had on your portrait. Monica still looks completely natural. Her textures are still there, her tones are still there, but everything's evened even down so it, it looks really nice save as a tiff file um, that will maintain your layers um, it will also keep um, the resolution of your image um, you don't want to save it as a jpeg because you will lose the resolution dramatically and you will also lose your layers i'm just going to clear her chest up a little bit here doing exactly what we did for the face So there you have it, frequency separation. Um, very often people think it's really difficult. It's basically a case of remembering a formula, um, which is pretty much what the case for most things in Photoshop. There we are. Okay, have fun trying that. Take care. Bye.